Okay, so as I mentioned, today is all about learning how to drive customers to your business with Google Business Profiles. We're going to cover an awful lot today, everything from growing your business, growing your revenue, growing your, your conversions online, but also the basics of how to set up Google Business Profiles and how to use them within Buffer. So you're going to get the full load of understanding everything to, to do with Google Business Profiles and improving your profile so it's ready to start collecting more customers. The agenda, it's a packed one, so I'm not spending too long in the introduction. You'll learn why you probably need a Google business profile, exactly what a Google business profile is, how to set up a profile, what Google business posts are. That's one that I was I was stumped on when I first did, first exploring Google business profiles a while ago. Um, if you should share posts, how often you should post, we'll do a little demo and then we'll have time to answer all of your questions at the end. And without further ado, let's get stuck in. So up first, we are going to attempt a poll. So hopefully you can see the poll. The question is, do you have a Google business profile? So hopefully most of you know what a Google business profile is, seeing as you've agreed to join this webinar. Um, the, uh, the thing we wanna know is, do you have a Google business profile? And well, hey, look at that. A lot of you have answered. And at the moment, it looks like the vast majority of you do have a Google business profile. 86% of you who have answered, uh, so that's 65 of you at the moment, have said you do have a Google business profile. And then 13% of you um, have said you don't have a Google business profile, which is fantastic. So if you don't have one, you're still going to learn a lot today because you'll learn sort of how they work, how to set one up as well, which will be useful. Um, but for those of you who do, for the vast majority who do, You'll learn how to make the most of your Google business profile. You'll learn what posts work and you'll learn how to get more traffic from your Google business profile as well. So thank you all for answering that poll. Okay. So let's start with why you probably need a good Google business profile. Now, a lot of you will know this already because a lot of you already have uh, Google business profiles, but let's face it, when we are looking to complete an activity, whether that be finding a place to have a cappuccino or finding a place to get a haircut, the, the, the big likelihood is that you're going to go to Google to do it. 85.5% of searches that are made online are made with Google. If you want to be found as a business, if you want to find a business as a customer, you need to be on Google. But being found on Google isn't just the case of optimizing for keywords and boosting your SEO. There's something else which is almost arguably more important for businesses, which is Google business profiles. From some of the research we've been doing, and we've been researching Google business profiles for a few months now in uh, preparation for the launch that we made a few, few weeks back, some of the research we've been doing has shown that keeping an up-to-date Google business profile is incredibly valuable for a business. According to Google themselves, they say it'll make your business 2.7 times more likely or make customers 2.7 times more likely to consider your business reputable. It'll make them 70% more likely to visit and 50% more likely to make a purchase. That's incredible. It's huge numbers just from keeping your Google business profile up to date. And there are several ways you can do that. And one of the ways is by posting regularly. We'll get into that later. And so I know most of you know this, as most of you have a Google business profile, but it's vitally important for small one-person businesses to multinationals to keep a, to have a profile, but not just have one, but to keep it up to date as well. So what is a Google business profile? Well, it's formerly known as Google My Business, but it's now Google business profile. And it shows up on Google products like Maps and Search. And really it shows up wherever you search for a business and it should show up wherever you search for a business as well. And when it shows up, it shows vital information, stuff like a short description of the business, contact details, location, opening hours, website links, questions and answers, reviews with pictures and posts as well. If you haven't used a Google business profile before, for the 13% of you who haven't, you probably know what it looks like because you've probably searched for one anyway. So here's how they look on maps. Very familiar. It's this profile that appears when you search for a business. Now, if you are one of the 13% who don't have a Google business profile and you're wondering if you need one based on if you have a physical location or an online presence, if you have a physical location, the you know, the chances are it's it's almost certain that you'll want a Google business profile, unless you didn't want to drive customers to your to your business. If you do want to drive customers to your business, you'll want a Google business profile. 
If you're purely online, you might not. So you might not want a Google business profile. There are examples where you won't, but you probably will. So Buffer is an example of a purely online business. We still have a Google business profile because even though we don't have a physical location, we still want a profile that comes up on Google when people search for us. So even if you're purely online, there's still value in having a profile. Now, how to set up? I'll be quick with this because I know a lot of you have already done it. Uh, but you sign into Google Maps. And then when you're in Google Maps, there are three ways to set up your profile. You can enter the address of your business in the search bar and click add your business. You can right click anywhere on the map where your Google, where your uh, prof, uh, sorry, your business is located and click add your business. Um, or you can go to the top left to those sort of three lines in the top left corner and click add your business from there. And then from there, you just follow the on-screen instructions to finish, fi finish setting up your profile. Now, I was going to spend a bit of time walking through how to verify your profile, but knowing that the vast majority of you already have a profile, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for today. For those of you who are still wondering about how to set it up, we've written an ultimate guide, which explains in detail how to get your profile verified and how to get set up. So just search for Buffer Ultimate Guide to Google Business Profiles, um, and that'll walk you through the steps. But Google also have great documentation on this as well. Simply put, setting up a Google Business Profile is fairly simple. There are some scenarios where it gets a bit tricky, um, but it's fairly simple. And then once you set up your business and, and verified it as well, you can start to add some sort of key information about your business, like your opening hours, your websites, but also other stuff like which payment options you accept, the ability to book a table if you're a restaurant, uh, your specific offers, how accessible your store is, what amenities you offer, when you first opened, and then COVID-19 updates as well. So there's a whole host of things you can add to your profile, not just opening hours and posts as well. But let's get on to posts, because posts are important. One, because it's what Buffer can help you with. So Buffer um, has released the ability to let you not only publish posts live on your Google business profile, but schedule them as well. On our free plan, you can schedule up to 10 posts. On a paid plan, you can schedule up to 2,000. And there's a lot of value in sharing Google business posts, which we'll get into in a while. Uh, but first, let's just look at what they are. Because some people, to some people, this is a fairly unknown feature. So some people don't recognize that Google business posts exist. Um, but you can publish posts just like you can on really any other social network. And here's how they appear on Google Maps, for instance. So this is uh, on Google Maps, and I've gone to a, a couple of businesses. And if you scroll down, you can see some of the posts that they have published recently. Now, there are four types of Google business posts. There is the what's new post. And this is a standard text or image posts that just shares a simple update on your profile about your business. There is an offer post. Now the offer post is similar to a what's new post, but it has a start and an end date and the option to add a coupon code as well. These posts visually look very similar, um, but they just have different metadata attached to them and then different options at the bottom, which, which for example, show the coupon code and the start and end date. You have an event, uh, an event post, which is again, similar to the offer, but it's just specifically for events. So you wouldn't be able to add a coupon code there, for example. And then you had COVID-19 updates. Now these are identical to the what's new post, but specifically for updates related to COVID-19. Now these are almost certainly going to get removed, I th we think within the next couple of months, potentially within the next six months. Um, so we're not going to cover them today. For that reason, they're also not available within Buffer as well. So you can't schedule COVID-19 updates within Buffer. You have to do that natively within Google Business Profiles. So the only you, if you want to be scheduling through Buffer, you use the what's new posts, the offer posts, and the events posts. And then here's some other places where Google business uh, profile posts appear. And this is a really important place. And this showcases why these posts are so valuable. So within Google Maps, you have the option to use Explore. Um, Explore is, as you can see, in the bottom left-hand corner of these screenshots, um, a very visible place within Google Maps. It is one of the icons you can click in the bottom. And it showcases when you're in an area, lots of updates from that area, reviews from people who are reviewing restaurants and places they've been to in that area. Um, 
other updates like that, but then also, and importantly, posts from businesses. And these posts get showcased to people and can be really good at driving customers. So posts don't just appear on your own pages, they appear on public pages as well that anyone can access. And that's starting to show some of the reasons why publishing regularly on your Google business profile can be great at driving customers, not only to your website, but to your business as well. Um, and a few examples of the different types of posts here. So all of these contain images. Some posts can contain videos and GIFs as well. Um, I think none of these posts have a link in them, but some have titles, some use emojis, lots of different examples. And then underneath those posts, they link to the actual Google business profile as well. So should you share posts on your Google business profile? Now, we're probably a little bit biased here at Buffer, but genuinely, and <laughs> trying not to be biased, we genuinely think everybody should. We think this is a bit of a no-brainer because really there is no there is no shortage of evidence that publishing posts on a Google business profile is just good for your business. Google, as we've mentioned earlier, says keeping an up-to-date profile makes customers 50% more likely to buy. And one of the factors with keeping your profile up-to-date is publishing regular posts to keep your customers informed about all of your latest offers. Google business expert, Joy Hawkins, who we interviewed in preparation for this webinar and for a post we did on our blog, she's run dozens and dozens of tests that show consistently posting will boost your traffic, will boost your engagement, and will boost your reach. And even though the posts that you put on your Google business profile might not directly increase your ranking on Google, they will, however, dive, drive traffic and visibility back to your site drive those backlinks and, and all that wonderful stuff that Google loves, which will ultimately help you rank higher on Google as well. So in an indirect way, it can also help you rank, rank higher. And well, with that in mind, you might be really surprised to hear that very few businesses currently publish regularly on Google business profiles. So we researched, we did a lot of research in preparation for our launch um, to see basically how many of the top businesses on Google were publishing regularly on their sites. So we analyzed 500 business profiles across five cities, London, Sydney, Delhi, Paris, and Toronto. So those are the five top cities where our Buffer customers are that is not based in the US. Now, why did we not look at the US? Because we were inspired by Ben Fisher's analysis and he did basically the same research as us, but only looking in the States. He found very similar results and we wanted to see if the results were consistent outside of the States. And so we looked at five different cities across five different countries. Um, we looked at 50 different sectors and 500 different profiles. And we found, well, very few profiles published regularly. Only 20.4% of profiles had published within the last 30 days. So only 21% had published within the last month. Only 43% had published in the last year. So that's less than half. And these aren't profiles of businesses that aren't active anymore or businesses that clearly aren't having investment. They're some of the top businesses. So they, these are businesses that people, people go to, people use, they're businesses that people search for, but they're not publishing regularly. And well, the, the takeaway here is that 79.6% of profiles don't publish regularly on Google business profiles. They don't publish once a month. Um, and this surprised all of us because all of the evidence that we've found have shown that publishing regularly is a simple but effective way to grow your traffic organically. So why do so few businesses fail to publish regularly on Google business profile. Well, we reached out to a few of our customers before our launch. These are customers who use Google business profiles, but didn't publish regularly or struggled to publish regularly. And here's what they said. So Dawn, she told us that one of the issues that she's had with Google business profiles is that you have to, you have to do it separately. If you're preparing all your posts for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, wherever it might be in Buffer or, or another place, you don't want to then have to go and load up and log in to another platform to publish some of the posts. Doing it separately in different tabs, it just takes more time. And then Niall said, sharing content across multiple social media channels and Google business profiles simply takes too much time. And this is a common thing. You know, businesses, uh, especially small, medium-sized businesses, they don't have the time to sort of click, click between lots of different tabs. And I guess more importantly, actually publishing on Google is outside of a marketer's typical workflow. 
So we're already sort of swamped with publishing on social, publishing newsletters, updating our blogs, publishing on Google is just an extra thing to manage that, that few of us have, have the actual time for. Um, and well, that's one of the reasons why Buffer has built an integration to try and solve this issue. And this isn't just the case um, in, certain in certain countries. As I mentioned, it's really the case around the world. So here's us breaking down the analysis I looked at earlier, but by country. So uh, Sydney, they, they had profiles of which published more regularly than the average, so 73%. Toronto was 78%. Delhi, 79%. Didn't publish regularly. Paris, 81% didn't publish regularly. London, 87% didn't publish regularly. And this got us thinking because we wondered if these businesses just didn't use Google business profiles at all, if they maybe made an account once and then didn't log back in. So we decided to look at reviews and saw how many of these companies in these cities actually responded to Google business reviews. And it turns out the vast majority of these profiles do respond to Google business reviews. So more than half, 55% in Delhi, up to 72% in Sydney. So the vast majority are using their Google business profile regularly. On average, 66.4% are using their Google business profile regularly because they're responding to reviews. But only 20% of them actually publish consistently. consistently. And as I'm sure you're going to expect me to hear me say, we think this is a, a bad thing. And I'll get into some of the reasons why now. So one of the main or one of the most obvious reasons to start off with, and I'll go through five reasons here, is that after six months, the posts that you publish, they just disappear from your profile. So after six months, um, the post will no longer be visible. It will no longer be sort of pulled out or have its image attached and its text, text attached. It won't appear on your page at all. All that you will see as a user is a, a bit of text which says view previous updates list and then a link to go and view your posts. So not very visible at all. You basically won't be able to see posts from a business after six months. So publishing at at least a, a semi-consistent rate um, semi-consistent um, amount of time would at least allow your, your posts to be visual on your page. And then another really important one is that Google pulls information from posts published within the last 60 days. So what do we mean here? Well, to add extra details to your profile, but also to searches when people are searching for your business, Google will pull extra information from your reviews, from your website, but also from your Google business posts. And Google calls these justifications. So here's an example of a justification in, um, in this image. So it's somebody searching for um, a, well, a jewelers in this example, and there's a justification at the at the bottom which Google has pulled, and this is a justification which has come from a post. So it's a post from that jewelers saying, "We have beautiful diamond rings. We also make custom something something something," and Google will pull different justifications based on what you search for. So if you search for custom jewelers, you can see that's what might pull this up. And it's really important you post regularly because people might search for different variations of your brand. So say you're a cafe and it's really hot, you might do a post about iced coffee being on offer. If you do, Google might pull that as a justification and show that to people when they search for iced coffee in my area. So having justifications on your profile will increase your visibility and boost your chances of capturing customers. So you'll want to do all you can do to, to get these justifications. But importantly, Google will only pull justifications from your prof from your posts from posts that have been published within the last 60 days. So you'll want to keep this rolling schedule of posts published on your profile to make sure that it's Google, Google is pulling your justifications from them. So another reason, and this is one we hinted at earlier, is to drive organic traffic from Explore. So Google Maps has a feature called Explore that showcases all of the latest updates in your area. On Explore, you'll, you'll find a real sort of mixture of different posts. So you'll see updates from local reviewers and, and more importantly to you, Google business profiles and Google business posts. And while preparing for this webinar, I took a look at Explore in my area and immediately saw three updates from local companies. So I took a couple of screenshots from them there. And it's, you can see how wonderful it is for businesses to be found when you just quickly um, publish a post and it'll immediately be visible to people in Explore. 
This is a great way to drive organic traffic to your page. The explore section of Google Maps is very visible. It is the first icon along the bottom row at the bottom of the app. And it's clear that Google is trying to push explore to its users. But importantly, your posts will only show up in explore if you've published within the last seven days. And the more recent a post is, the more chance it has of appearing at the top of this list. So a weekly publishing cadence is what's really absolutely necessary to even have a chance of appearing in Explore. And arguably, there's a, there's a reason to even publish more regularly than that, to even have a daily publishing cadence to make sure your business is always appearing at the top of Explore. So if ever there is a local or a tourist in your area looking for places to go and they hit Explore, your business will, will come up. So that's a really good reason to publish really within a, a weekly cadence. And then the final reason, I think this is the most telling group, to be honest, is that really the vast majority of businesses don't publish regularly on Google. We cover this at the start, but 79% of businesses aren't publishing per month. And this means there's a huge opportunity, a huge opportunity for you to get ahead of your competition. With so few businesses publishing on the platform, you'll have a much greater chance of capturing atten attention with basically with, with integrating a weekly posting cadence. So it's really important to post, not only because Google will boost your posts and, and pull justifications from your posts, not only because it means those posts won't disappear after six months, and not only because it will mean you'll, you'll appear on Explore, but also because it will just put you ahead of your competition. And when people are searching for your profile, it's more likely that yours will be more visible than some of the bigger competitors in your market. Okay. So that's how often you should post. Now, the important thing that you might want, you might wonder is how can you make your posts click worthy? How can you make posts that people actually want to read, that people actually engage with, and that turns people actually into customers? Well, as I mentioned, we decided to reach out to an expert on this. So we spoke to Joy Hawkins. Joy has been researching Google business profiles for the last 10 years. She's got a whole agency which is focused on Google business profiles. And she spoke to us in preparation for this webinar to share her five top tips for crafting click-worthy posts on Google Business Profile. And there are some basic tips and some more complex ones. And we'll start with a very basic one. And it is, you should use an emoji. So she ran a study which compared publishing posts with and without an emoji. That was the only variant. So the copy was the same in both of the studies, but the emoji was added in one set. And she found that those emojis increased customer engagement. Um, and it was especially increased customer engagement when used in positive context. So, you know, not necessarily dropping an emoji on your COVID-19 update, but dropping an emoji when you've got a great offer on, that seems to work really well. So Joy's research in particular found that posts which contained an emoji got twice as many clicks as those that didn't. So it's just a neat way for you to stand out, neat way for you to capture attention and a neat way to drive traffic to your business. So use an emoji is a good example. Another important one, and this might sound obvious, but as you saw with some of those screenshots I shared earlier, a lot of businesses don't do this, but you really should add a title when you're creating your Google business posts. So you have the option to add a title, but you don't have to use it. So you can just use the accompanying text. And a lot of people do this, but it's a real mistake. Joy recommends that you should always add a title. It's an optional field, but she found that posts with titles just got more clicks, more conversions. It's a neater way to break up your text. Also, if users just see a sort of paragraph of thick te text with no title, it's just harder to digest. There's less chance to actually read it. So do try and add a title whenever you're creating a Google business post, whether that's an event, an offer, or a what's new post. Next up, and this is this is a bit more important, maybe a bit more complex. So if you are doing search engine optimization and you've got keywords that you're targeting and you've got keywords that you want to show up for when people search for them, it's important that you include those keywords in your Google business posts. So like I mentioned earlier, Google business posts, they won't help you rank for these keywords, but... If you're already ranking for them, so say you are, you know, you're attempting to rank for cafes in Delhi, for example, you should use those keywords in your post because if you're already ranking for, for them, those posts will actually show up in the search results for the related keywords and just give you more of a chance for customer finding your profile and finding your business. 
So try and include the keywords you're targeting in your Google posts. Um, but don't be spammy. Don't overuse them. So Google, they, they're not afraid of banning people who try and spam with Google business posts. So Joy definitely advises that you, you really shouldn't be just using multiple of your keywords in one post, which just basically don't add, add any value. Just try and spam. Um, you should try and use them in an authentic way. So Joy says, for example, if you are State Farm and you're doing a post about how much you'll save on auto insurance, then everybody should already know that auto insurance is linked to State Farm. So it makes sense that you would want to use that keyword in your post. So your post could say something like, save up to 40% on auto insurance. That's a really neat, non-spammy way to include the keyword of auto insurance in a post and well, hopefully just make sure that that post shows up in some of the search results for the related keywords when people search for your brand. So again, if you're targeting keywords, you're already ranking for those keywords, do try and use those keywords in your post. Just do it in a, in a non-spammy way, in a way that adds value. Okay, and linked to that is tip number four. So like I mentioned, Google will ban profiles if they if they use google business profiles in the in the wrong way they are they're quite strict on this so you really should avoid using anything in your profile and anything in your post that google has 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 banned so content that's irrelevant to the business so any content that you're sharing that really isn't relevant to your business really has no place on google business posts again this is maybe slightly different to how businesses treat social media i think a lot of businesses treat social media as a way to to share general thoughts about maybe not even the brand, but about general things just to capture engagement. That's not how you should be uh, tackling your Google business profile. All of your posts really should be relating to your brand. This applies to the links that you put in your, in your posts and then the visual contents as well. So the images and the video, all of those, the copy, the links, the images, the videos, they should all relate to your brand. brand. Spammy looking content, so stuff that's misspelled, poor quality or directing users to harmful or irrelevant sites. Anything like that will, will be a surefire way to get your account banned. Um, any content that improve, contains private or confidential information, including things like a phone number, um, you shouldn't include in your post. So for example, if you wanted, say you're a consultancy, if you wanted to include your phone number in your post, there's a way of doing that without making it look spammy. So you can use the call now button in your post and then link to your verified phone number in the call now button. That's a way of linking to your phone number um, in, a, in, a, in a way that Google likes. So just make sure you're following those rules. Make sure your posts don't look spammy. I think the most important one, the one that I would get caught out on as a marketer is just making sure that your posts relate to your business. And there's a reason why that's a good thing as well. I think you can think, you can hear that and you can think, oh, well, this will just make my account look boring and it will make nobody want to engage with me. But what you've got to remember about Google business profiles is people aren't coming to your profile or, or you're not trying to capture attention for your brand in the same way that you might be on social media. So on social media, a user has a feed of lots of wonderfully interesting things that they're scrolling through. And as a brand, you have to be wonderful and interesting just to stand out. This isn't the case with Google business profiles. If you're on Google, you're probably looking for that brand in the first place, or you're looking for a brand that helps in that category. So it really makes sense as a business to just talk about the business in your posts and to not talk about something else. So that's a really important thing to focus on when you're writing your posts. And it links to our final tip. And this is one that I think is really important. Um, and Joy says that really, you should treat your posts more like ads than like you would a normal social media post. So as I mentioned earlier, Joy says that it is very different on Google, Google business profiles than what you might expect to post on Facebook, for example. With social media, people say that you should post things that people engage with. So she gives an example of businesses will often post pictures of their dogs. Um, say here's the dog that's in the office in the day um, but that's not the case that's not what you should be doing on google business posts joy says you should always use google business posts really for promotions in her view the worst performing posts on google businesses are sort of informational how-to posts because the people that are seeing these posts are people that already know you and are people that arguably already need you so these people don't need sort of informational posts or how-to posts about sort of how to get 
in touch or how to find us or or other things about the business like that. They just need to know about actually using your services. So Joy says a better strategy is to think of your posts like coupons or magazine ads. So an example, if you are a car repair, repair client, for example, you should offer a $10 coupon off code in your post. And that post will get a lot more activity. Um, so if you're selling a product of any kind, it's really beneficial to talk about the promotions, the coupons, or the savings your customers could get from approaching you instead of the competitors they've come across. Again, imagine your Google business post as a sort of listing in a in a yellow pages if you're from the UK or an equivalent if you're somewhere else. There's lots of other businesses on there. You need to stand out. So the best thing you can do is, is showcase a coupon treat it like a promotion. It's a chance to really just encourage customers to come to you. And that's very different from social media. So yeah, Google business posts, treat them more like ads and social media. That's a surefire way to get people to click on them. Cool. So quick recap, emojis, very handy. Try to use a title or always use a title actually, if you can. If you're targeting keywords, include them in your post. Don't do things that will get you banned, like not talking about your business. And that's important because you should be treating your posts like ads, not like social media. This is a chance to showcase why your business is better than your competitors and to get people to come. So do things like dropping in a coupon code or dropping in an offer and stuff like that. That'll get people to click on your business. So it is time for a very quick demo. So I'm going to load up, whoop, let me... Let's move this down, load up Buffer. Here we go. Um, so this is this is Buffer. And I'm going to show you how to connect your Google business profile and then just show you what the composer looks like so you're aware of that. And then we're going to go for the Q&A at the end. So we're probably five minutes away from being done now. So if you want to go to the Q&A, if you want to ask any questions, make sure you drop them in the Q&A now. So adding a Google business profile and Buffer, it is very easy. Um, you click manage channels and this will load up all of the channels that you have. Um, so we've got a few of our buffer account and we're going to connect a new one. And which one do we want to connect? Well, lots of options, but today we want to pick Google business profile. And what this will do here is it'll load up your Google accounts. So these are the two accounts I have with Google and you want to select the account which is linked to your Google business profile. So whichever account you created your Google business profile on. For me, that's my business account. And I'll just click allow. And then it will show me the Google business profiles I have. So I have this, this is made up for the demo, the Bufferista Espresso Bar, definitely a place I'd love to visit. Um, and you can click add to Buffer. And voila, it's done. My Google business profile is now connected with Buffer. Um, so that appears in channels. Now I should mention that Google business profiles is not available in analytics and it's not available in engagement at the moment. So you won't see any, any stats and you won't be able to do any engagement like respond to reviews, for example, but it is available in publishing and it's really easy to use. So I, um, I've got my Google business profile selected here and you can see my sort of calendar. I can <clears throat> already start picking when I want to post um, an update. <clears throat> so say for example, I know that people might be searching for my business on Saturday morning as a, as a coffee shop, I might schedule a post for then. And well, I've got a few options as to what I post. So I can create a what's new post. So this, as I mentioned, very simple sort of um, update about what's going on with my business. So I can type the update in there. Um, and then I can attach an image here as well, an image or video. So I can also attach that just manually, or I can use Canva, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. And I can use also add a, as a button as well. So if I'm an online business, I can get people to order online. I could allow people to book tables, for example, to learn more, to sign up, or to buy if I'm selling at that moment. And then we've made adding emojis, which I know we said is important, very easy. You can just use our emoji keyboard here. Um, I can then switch to offer posts, and this is very similar, but the ability, well, just to add a little bit more information. So I can, again, add my copy in here, add my image, then I can add my offer title, which as we mentioned, it's really important, very important for you to add a title. Um, so that would be the title of your offer. So say, for example, save 10% off your next coffee this Saturday only. And if it was just for that Saturday, I could make sure that it was only available on that Saturday. 
Um, because that's one day, I might want to add a time as well. So I might want to say, start it when the business opens at 10 a.m. and end it when the business closes at 4 p.m. Um, we can even add more details as well. If you want, this gives you the option to add a coupon code for the people who want to sign up, a link to get that coupon, and then even some terms and conditions as well. Um, if you have some standard terms and conditions, you can drop that in there. So that's the offer. And then finally, let's have a look at the event. This is very similar to the offer, except you, you basically just lose those extra details. So the coupon code, stuff like that. So if I was doing, let's say, a book club at the cafe on a Tuesday night, I could drop that in the title. I could add a bit more information about the club, maybe an image about some of the books we're going to look at, and then just select when the event will be. So let's say it'll be Tuesday and it'll be in the evening. Um, just set that up very simply. And then add a button as well. So you could book um, and then just drop a link to, to where you want to sign up. Um, and then as always, everything else that you might expect with the publishing tool within Buffer is available. So I can attach this to a campaign if I like. As always, I can edit the time. Place the composer here. I'll show what this looks like in the calendar as well. So once you've scheduled, you'll be able to see that within the calendar. If you're creating posts on social and Twitter, you can also at the same time attach them to your Google business profile. So say we're doing a post on LinkedIn and Twitter, which is about a deal we've got. We can add that to Google business profile as well. Um, and yes, I ultimately very easy to use, very intuitive um, and very easy to get started with as well. Um, and then once you start publishing, as I mentioned, if you're on the free plan, you get up to 10 posts with Google Business Profile. And if you're on the, um, if you're on a paid plan, you get up to 2,000 posts. So a lot of posts for you there. Okay, well, we are now moving in to Q&A. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I hope that answered a lot of your questions already. Um, but we are now going to open up Q&A. And... As I can tell, as I can, um, as I'm sure a lot of you have already seen, Hannah and Lexi have already been answering lots of your questions as well. Um, so if you want to see any of the questions that have been answered, you can go into the Q&A and you can answer them there. So there's been a few questions on stuff like, will the slides be shared after? They will be. Don't worry about that. Um, is this the free, free version of Buffer? And yeah, as I mentioned, so you can get this on the free version already. Um, and other questions like that. I'll now go to some of the open questions as well. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got a question here from, from um, uh, Liuga, I think is how I pronounce your name. Sorry if I'm wrong there, but it is, can, I, can you provide some tips and tricks for the best image size to paste? This is a great question. Um, and one that I don't have a specific answer for but i've got a, a gut <laughs> reaction which is image posts that i've seen that are most common on google business profiles are image posts with the same aspect ratio so the same height to width ratio so exactly what you would put on instagram for example um, as you maybe saw with some of the images i shared earlier if i maybe get them up um, let's see where they would be yeah here's an example the images that if you if you post well here's an aspect ratio which is which is slightly different and it will be cropped but one of the most sort of common ways that they appear is is in block format so either on your phone or or on the web and so that's a, a sort of surefire way to make them be visible so a similar aspect ratio is good it also appears that it, it could be quite good to have a slightly um, wider width and shorter height so that's a good example as well uh, what I wouldn't advise is posting any vertical images. So the sort of images that you might use in a TikTok video or a reel or an Instagram story, because it doesn't, I don't feel like they would fit too well into the, into the sort of, um, well, the way Google posts appear. So um, yeah, the only real suggestion shit there is to not use vertical style images. So Antonia asks, um, is it still useful to be active on our Google business profile if we are an agency offering services? Um, this is a really good question. Um, so agency offering services. Um, I think the answer here is ultimately yes. So the first thing you should ask yourself as a business is, will people be searching for my, for my business? And 
So an agency offering services, that's probably going to be yes. Um, and then you probably got to ask yourself, well, if they search for my business, are there sort of terms, keywords they might use to search for my business as well? Perhaps stuff like some of the specific um, some of the specific agency consultancy that you might offer, for example, stuff like that. I think it makes sense for you to publish posts on your profile because when people do those searches, your posts will appear in justifications, as we mentioned. Um, when people do searches, if they're on, um, they might not be on Google Maps, but they'll still search on Google Search and your profiles will appear on there as well. And posts will make your profile a little bit more visible. And then finally, if people are searching and you have got an offer or coupon or perhaps an event coming up, it's really important to put that in your post because Google will prioritize those as well. So for businesses that are purely online, yes, it's it's less likely that Google business profiles will be vital for your business, but it's still worth posting, especially because a lot of your competitors in the space won't be posting as well. So that's important to consider too. So I would say, I would say yes, I'd definitely say try it out. Well, another thing we did in preparation for this launch is we we asked a couple of companies to attempt posting regularly for 30 days. And one of the companies was a, was a cafe in Portugal and they saw, I think it was something like uh, an extra thousand visits to their, to their website following posting just from those posts. So it was really valuable. And then another company was an online company and they didn't see the same impact. So for them, it didn't work quite as well. But testing it just for a month is a really worthwhile thing to do. So I would say say yes to that. So hopefully, Antonio, it's Antonio that or that answers your your question. So we've got a. Uh, I'll try and rattle through some of these. Is the business? And by the way, if we don't answer all of these today, we'll we'll get we'll contact you via email to answer them there. We've got one here, which is: Is the business profile linked to a particular site? We have two sites for our business. One is the brochure site with lots of info, and the other is our online shop. Um, that's a really good question, and. I'll have to double check this. I believe when you search for a Google business profile, they will only show one website when you first search for it. Um, so they'll only search, they'll only showcase one website. Now that's just the website they showcase on your profile. You can obviously link to multiple different um, websites on your posts. So if you are posting about your brochure site, you can, you can link to it there. If you're posting about your online shop, you can link to it there. Um, but I believe on your profile, you will only link to one site. Um, if you wanted to, to come up with a, to create a site, which had multiple links within it, you can use Buffer's start page. And then within the start page, you can link to your brochure site and your online shop. And that can just be your sort of all in one, uh, website to link people off to the right website. So there's an option there, but yes, in general, I believe that LinkedIn profiles are linked to one particular, particular site. Cool. So that was that question. We've got another question here, which is any tips on content to post if you don't actually want to drive physical traffic to your business's premises? So I think the same tips stay relevant here. The tips were, were not for driving people to your business um, premises. They were just to get clicks on your posts. So adding an emoji, adding a title, avoiding spammy con content, treating the post like a an ad rather than social media. All of those things are, are still just as important for getting clicks to your site as it would be to get physical traffic to your present, uh, to your premises. So good question there. Kate asks a really interesting question. Aren't emojis a demographic thing, like a younger demographic compared to an older demographic? I think that's a really good question. And I think as a, as a real strong reason to say yes. So I know that Joy's research was, was very wide uh, widespread and it ultimately showed that people were more likely to click on the emoji i think there's some real there's some good evidence behind that why that might be an emoji is it just stands out it is just a distinctive asset that you can use within text and it, that will stand out to everybody from an older generation to a younger generation so they are more visible that said like the answer to that earlier question these are things you should test you shouldn't just follow the rules um it's just just because they they work in general you should check if they work for you so if you are a, a a business that is is targeting an older demographic maybe you should try emojis in a few of your posts and just see if it resonates because it might not be right for you um, but ultimately the data says that it does work for the majority of businesses but it's worth trying i'm sure there are businesses where you wouldn't want to include emojis in general i can think of a couple off the top of my head which where you wouldn't just want to be using emojis where it wouldn't be quite right um, but for the majority, it seems to attract clicks. That's hopefully that answers your question there. Another question here, which is on the title tip, how do we make sure that we add a title? Um, 
I mean, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, so I guess the best way to do it is just to, when you're scheduling your posts, maybe have an approval process with your posts where you check them before they go out. Um, another way would just be to, when you're writing your posts, if you write them in advance, make sure you already have, always have your title as well as your, as well as your copy. Um, yeah, anything you're using to really create your content in the first place, maybe just if you've, if you've got a word doc or a notion doc or whatever it might be, where you're ideating on what content to create, make sure you add something in for when you're doing Google business profiles, the ability to say, add a title here. So anything you can do to sort of change the way you set up and, and create your profile, um, and create your posts, just make sure you, you sort of thinking of the title as well. Great question. Um, and Tammy's got a question here, which is, should we use hashtags when posting to Google? This is a really good question. So this is another one that we asked Joy, um, and she, she spoke about this in the blog we wrote with her on our site. And she said that hashtags have no impact on Google. So hashtags aren't useful at all, essentially. So there is no ability to click on the hashtag and see other posts which link to that hashtag. That's not a thing on Google. Um, and they appear, if you put them in your profile, I believe they just appear at sort of blank hashtags, unclickable, no hyperlink attached to them. And Joy actually argued that they can make your account look more spammy, which increases the chance that you'll get sort of potentially banned or, banned or at least deprioritized by Google. So the advice is not to use hashtags where possible when you're publishing on Google. So do try and avoid um, hashtags. Great question, Tammy. I've got a question here, which is where do I find out what Google has banned so I don't inadvertently use it? That's a good question. Um, I would... I wouldn't, I don't actually know, so exactly where to find it. Um, but I know Google will have some good advice at that. So a bit meta here, but I would say to Google it. Um, all I can say is that I, I don't think they ban for a lot of things, but they definitely ban if you're clearly being spammy. So doing things like, again, linking to things that are definitely not related to your business, linking to, to websites and, and links that are clearly not related to your business. Those are all really important. But yeah, definitely have a look. Um, and make sure uh, and make sure uh, you, you've sort of covered those when you're in your google business profile as well there'll be documentation in there so within the google business profile on google you'll be able to go to the help center um, and and actually read what what's not allowed and what is allowed on there okay um another question from sergio can we use hashtags or app mentions other brands we work with will hashtags do anything so as i mentioned hashtags won't and app mentions won't either so uh, very different from social again you can't app mention posts on google business profiles so no point in doing that um a question here which is does yelp reviews pull from google i believe does Yelp reviews pull from Google? Okay, so that's asking if Yelp pulls reviews from Google. Actually, I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't look into Yelp in preparation for this. Um, yeah, I don't know. If it's the other way around, if Google reviews pull from Yelp, I think that's a definite no. I'm pretty sure that the only reviews that appear in Google reviews are Google reviews specifically. I don't know, however, if Yelp pulls from Google. So that's one, one to look up. Um, Tanya asks, from your opinion, um, using Google posts better or the same as Google ads? Um, this is a really interesting question. I think in general, these are very different things. So Google ads, obviously that's a paid, paid thing. You're paying for visibility. You're paying to appear as top of the top of the search results when somebody searches for you. And that provides an awful lot of value, but it can cost an awful lot as well. Um, I think value is, so uh, you did ask, Better or the same. So better or the same. I guess you could argue fundamentally ads is probably a better thing to do. People globally around the world have made more money from Google ads than they have from publishing on Google posts. That's undeniable. But value in terms of like, actually, what's the value you get out of it? I think you can get more value from scheduling 10 posts on Google business profile every month, which probably takes you, let's say, an hour. Then you could from spending let's say your first, however long you would spend, however much you might spend on Google ads. Um, so I, can, I reckon you can get more value for the same amount of time and effort put into Google posts than you could out of Google ads. And especially if you're not doing it as well. So it's organic marketing, you know, it's, it's, it's completely free in terms of it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and it will put you ahead of those 79% of competitors who aren't publishing regularly on Google as well. 
So treat them as very different things, you know, an ad obviously very different from an organic marketing post, but there's a lot of value to be had and most other companies aren't using it. So it's worth trying. Cool. Uh, Jerry says, I provide a service. How do I use coupons in my post? So there are lots of different ways you can use coupons. I know I covered the sort of standard you know, offer code, buy now for 50% off. Um, there's lots of different offers you could use. So a coupon could be something like uh, get your first, I don't know what your service is, but say it's a consultancy, get your first 30 minute session for free or get your first 30 minute session for 50% off or um, join the community at a half price deal, whatever it might be. So still different ways you can use coupons to, to make your service stand out and to make it look different. Um, I think maybe just think quite laterally with it as well. You know, if you've got a, let's say an event coming up, you might not want to use it to sell tickets. You might even just use a coupon code to say, we're extending the early bird discount for another 10 days. Use this coupon code to get 10 extra days, that sort of thing. So there's lots of lots of ways you can use coupons. That said, it might not always be the best one for you to use. So do check out the events and what's new posts as well. Um, do you think announcing a new podcast episode on Google um, Google Events would be helpful? Oh, that's a really interesting, Tanya. So you're thinking of using the Google Events posts on Google Business Profiles to publish, uh, to share your, your podcast. Now, events, I would probably say the thing with events is they're meant to be for something in the future and they're meant to be something that people can sort of sign up to. And with a podcast... I guess you can subscribe, but you don't have to be there on that specific time in the future to see the podcast episode is live. So I might suggest rather than using an event post to showcase your podcast, you might just be better off using the what's new post once the podcast is live and just say, here's a new podcast, just come out, listen here, uh, click now to listen. Here's what we talk about, chuck in a title and emoji as well. Um, that might be better than events. The only the only thing that I would, um, the only example where I wouldn't agree with that is if, say, you're doing a live podcast, you're live streaming it on YouTube, and it's at a certain time, that would be a good time to use events and say, we're doing this live stream podcast from 10 till 11 on Tuesday, join us here, that would be a good time to use it. But the, if the podcast is just going out like a normal podcast, it might just be better to use a what's new post once it's live. Cool. And then, so we've got a few more questions here. I'm conscious of time, so I definitely, we won't go over half uh, half an hour. Um, so I'm conscious of time, so I make sure we, we don't do that. Um, and then we have a question. Is it useful for niche tech B2B businesses? Again, Daria, this is one, it's, it's just going to be one where it's worth checking. Um, I think if people are, if people are searching for these types of businesses um, a lot and you can see that profiles are appearing when these search take place, then possibly it would be really useful for your, for your tech. If this tech isn't searched for a lot, if, you're, if a lot of your customers come through, say, cold outreach or stuff like that, perhaps it's not as useful. But what's the harm in trying? What's the harm in, in doing one month worth of posts, adding some UTM links to those posts and just checking how many clicks you get on them. That would be a really useful thing to do. Um, so that's, that would be my suggestion there. Um, Stephanie asks, when scheduling an event, do the dates represent the date of the event or the date that the post will be published? Like if I have an event on, eight, on the 8th, 26th, but want to advertise it for additional days, is that possible? That's a great question. And I, I'll just show you on the screen yeah, exactly what it looks like. Um, so when you are publishing an event, let's go to Q. So we got it here. Um, so actually first, so this here is our queue. And here is where we're deciding when the post will be published. So this is what, this is buffer, buffer, classic buffer. All of you as customers will know this. You select when the post will be published. So say I want this post to go out tomorrow morning. I then go to event, the event's start and end date is just for when the event takes place. This has nothing to do with when the post will be published. So these dates, it's not to do with when it's scheduled. You can see at the bottom here um, when, the, when the schedule date is. The start and end date is really nothing to do with that. That's, that's all to do with 
when the actual event is. So your schedule date is when the post will be published. The start and end date is when the event will actually be in. You'll then, you'll then see that within um, Google business profiles when you're looking at those posts. So that's the difference there. Hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, Samantha asks, do testimonials perform well as posts on Google business profiles? So that's a good question. And I think it depends what context you use them in. So from what Joy has told us, she says treat these posts as promotions, as ads, as a chance to leave an offer code or a coupon. So my suggestion, if you want to use a testimonial, is to use it in conjunction with a bit of a promotion. So perhaps you say, you know, uh, Gemma has said that I'm going to use a very standard example. The hairdresser, this hairdresser is, is wonderful. She just had a fantastic cut. Um, if you want a haircut like Gemma, you can use the offer code XYZ to get 5% off. Or come and book your appointment now. Bookings are available up until July, stuff like that. So just find a way to link those testimonials um, to, to, to your to your um, to your actual promotional ads. Cool. Trying to rattle through as many of these as possible. Again, if I don't answer all of them, we will try and get into we will try and answer them by email as well. Um, so let's try and do a couple more. Um, Laura has asked, can you Laura has asked, can you have a Google business profile for each company slash website you run? Yes, you can. In fact, you can have multiple profiles under one Google account. As you saw when I connected my Google account, so my one, my Buffer profile, with uh, Buffer's Google business profile, I had two different Google business profiles on there with each completely different businesses, completely different accounts. So you can have a different profile for each company website you run. The only thing I would suggest there is if, if they're sort of different departments of the same business, it might be worth combining them into one. Um, because you might not want multiple different profiles to be competing. The only caveat where that isn't the place that isn't the case is if you're a physical location and you want people to search for individual stores. So Starbucks don't just have one Google business profile. They'll have thousands for each of their different stores because they want people to be able to search for them. So yeah, if you have different companies, you can create different profiles. If you've got one company with lots of different locations, you can create different locations for them as well. And I should add if those, those different locations I believe we'll all publish their own individual posts as well. So you'll have to connect them all individually. Okay, well, folks, there are a few more questions in there. Um, and, uh, well, no, I can't keep answering them because we'll go on all day. So we will try and follow up with you individually to answer them. Um, that is all for today. As we mentioned at the start, these the recording and the slides will be sent out afterwards. Um, so. Thank you so much for listening. But if you do want to listen again, you can do so there. Um, and do get in touch as well. So you can get in touch with us, obviously, via the customer support team. As usual, you can reach out to us on Twitter. And in fact, I wanted to let you know that in an hour, we have uh, Ask Me Anything on Twitter as well. So you can reach out to us on there. Um, and yeah, thank you all again for coming and listening to the webinar today. Okay, see you later. <laughs>